Hi everybody, this is Heidi E.Y. Stemple. I am a children's book author and I am coming to you today from my house in Massachusetts where I, just like you guys, am stuck at home and doing my work from home. But I wanted to do something special for the kids who are out there doing school and wanted some extra activities and with the permission of my wonderful publisher, Quarto Books, I am going to share with you today my book, Counting Birds. Now, I'm going to come to you every week with the, uh, every day this week with a video, and today I'm going to start by reading this book, but if you want extra activities during this week, every day's little video is going to come with an exercise or a, a worksheet or an activity sheet that is on a free downloadable um, PDF on my website, which is www.heidieystemple.com. You have to click on books and then you have to click on the book Counting Birds, which you should remember because we're going to read it today. And then you can have a worksheet. Now, I've tried to make sure that it is. There are activities for the biggest learners and the smallest learners. There are some websites to try and uh, find out, do some more research on your own on birds, if you'd like. Uh, and I hope that you like it. I want to give a little shout out to some friends that I have that I think are with us today. I want to say hi to Lila and Reese and Hazel in Massachusetts, to Nate, Sammy, and Little Jem in Maine. Hi, Jem. Uh, to Nathan and Alex in Connecticut, and also far away from me because I'm in Massachusetts, I want to say hi to Violet and to Luke and Landon who are out in Georgia with us today. So without further ado, I'm going to read to you my book. Now I want to tell you first of all that it is by me, you'll see right on the cover, Heidi E.Y. Stemple, and the illustrations, look aren't they beautiful illustrations, are by Clover Robin, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about her art uh, another one of these days on one of my videos, but today I'm going to read the book. Counting Birds is a non-fiction book. That means it is a true story. It's the actual story of an event that happened, and I'm going to start there. With, here are the end papers. Aren't those amazing? That's the first thing you see when you open a book. Counting Birds. Counting Birds, the idea that helped save our feathered friends. I'm going to put on my reading glasses so I can read better for you. Frank Chapman loved birds. He worked at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, creating exhibits about birds. He wrote books and magazines articles about birds. He studied birds' habits and habitats. He read the research of John James Audubon, the most famous ornithologist of all time. Frank Chapman loved birds. In 1899, he began his own magazine called Bird Lore. Every two months, Bird Lore was published and read by other bird lovers. Around this time, Americans were starting to think about the natural world around them. First scientists and poets, then government leaders, and finally more and more regular citizens were starting to talk about conservation. How could they better live in their world? How could they save the wilderness that was disappearing, the forests that were being cut down, the waterways that were being polluted, and animals and birds that were being overhunted. But not everyone cared about conservation. On Christmas Day, sports hunters would gather, choose teams, and hold a bird competition. All day long, hunters looked for birds. Large birds, small birds, all birds were game. At the end of the day, the birds were counted. The winning team was the side that had shot and killed the most birds. Does 
That's so good, does it? Frank Chapman did not love this tradition. In the pages of his magazine, he set out to stop it. Now Bird Lord proposes a new kind of side hunt in the form of a Christmas bird census. And we hope that all of our readers who have the opportunity will aid us in making it a success by spending a portion of Christmas day with the birds and sending a report of their hunt to Bird Lore before they retire that night. Count them, he proposed, but don't kill them. That first year on Christmas Day, 1900, two, 27 birds, 27 bird watchers in 25 locations from Connecticut to California counted common loons and killdeer, winter wrens, and red winged blackbirds. They observed hermit thrushes, barred owls, Carolina chickadees, fish crows, turkey vultures, and spotted and canyon towhees. All in all, bird lore proudly reported close to 18,500 birds from 89 different species. Not one bird was killed. That first count was not the last. Every year in December, more people join the count. Every year more areas are counted and every year more and more birds are counted in every corner of the United States as well as Canada, Mexico, and Colombia. Other counts happen all over the world. The owlers are the first ones in the field they climb out of their warm beds at midnight and call down owls in the dark. By the light of the moon, they raise their hands to their mouths and whistle. They reuse recordings of real owls to hoot. They wait and listen. When an owl calls back, the owlers mark their maps and move to the next spot. When the sun starts to rise, so do fresh birders who arrive to take over. Some owlers say good night and some keep counting. All day long, groups observe and take notes in their camp count circles. Sandwich terns and song sparrows, creepers, thrashers, bufflehead brant and bob whites, all birds are welcome. Not all bird watchers are in the field. Some count the birds that come to their backyard feeders. All birders are welcome. At the end of the day, the birders collect their notes and their numbers. Later, the National Audubon Society will compile all that data and learn many things. How climate change affects bird populations, which species are in trouble, which areas need conservation help. The birders know this is important for science, but that night, what's really important are their stories. Which rare birds were spouted, spotted? Who found the most owls? What records were broken? The Audubon Christmas Bird Count became, has become the longest running citizen science project and wildlife census in the entire world. Everyone wins. The birds, the birders, and science. And all this because Frank Chapman loved birds. And that is the story of Frank Chapman and the first Audubon Christmas bird count that happened over a hundred years ago. 121 years ago on Christmas Day in 1900. That's a really, really long time ago, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you, in the back of this book, there are also other parts, it's called Back Matter, where I talk about a little more about what Frank did and a lot of ways that you can get involved. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this on our fifth day together about citizen science. But it also talks about 
why I wrote this book, which is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. And <clears throat> we're going to talk about my favorite thing tomorrow, and that is owls. So I hope you tune in tomorrow when we're going to talk about owls. I'm going to tell you why I wrote this book, but we are also going to learn to call owls together. So I hope you tune in for that. Now I'll tell you again, if you want to do a project today, um, today's project will involve either finding a favorite bird. I named lots of birds in here, bobbleheads, bob whites, red winged blackbirds, barred owls, condors, vultures. So if you would like to look up your own favorite bird and do a little research project about that, but maybe if you're not old enough to do something like that, you can make up your own bird. So go to my website. It's www.heidieystemple.com. You want to click on books and then click on counting birds and you'll see the worksheet number one is today's. And I hope you enjoy it and have fun. And be patient with me because I am just learning how to record these things. I hope I see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.